Hello and welcome. Uh, sorry for the technical issues. Uh, I, there is problems with uh, MacBook, and I have the MacBook. And um, uh, I'm Guillaume Salou. I'm the team leader of machine learning machine learning services at OVH Cloud. And today we will talk about uh, machine learning at scale with OpenStack. And I will discuss about machine learning uh, with you. And uh, first I will talk about OVH Cloud. Uh, as you may guess, we are a cloud company as well. And we have more than 300,000 uh, physical servers all around the world. Some of them are in the US, in the Canada, in Asia, and, of, and most of them are in Europe. And we have um, 30 data centers uh, all around the world. So we will see our values at OVH, which is very important. And uh, um, we want to be smart, smart for simple, multi-local, accessible, reversible and transparent. And when we are thinking about open source, we have to be reversible and transparent. So it's okay for us to uh, contribute to open source project as well. And uh, you will see if our platform of machine learning is smart as well. And uh, we try to do this every day and we keep th those values in mind. So I will talk about uh, my team. This is the machine learning services. And we have merged two different job profiles. First, there are data scientists. Uh, data scientists are here to solve problems, uh, problems about the company. And we will see some use case at OVH Cloud. And on the other side, we have DevOps. They are here to, uh, to, uh, to ensure the problems about uh, the infrastructure or uh <laughs> Uh, to deploy some component uh, on OpenStack, uh, for instance. And at the middle of the two different uh, job profile, we have the platform that we are building. So here is a new job profile, which is machine learning software engineer. I, his goal is to uh, provide and to build machine learning platform, machine learning tool, and we will see how we do this. So. We'll start and talk about machine learning to be sure that we will talk about the same things. And we'll show one example, and we'll so show after this how we deploy it at OVH Cloud, and after this, the machine learning development process, and how a machine learning platform can, um, can simplify the deployment and the machine learning development process and how we are building it up on OpenStack and at scale. So here is a little picture about what is machine learning. I let you read uh, this. So we will take an example with Homer. And uh, oh no, sorry. Uh, in definition, um, uh, machine learning is only a function a function as f and x as input, and we will return y. So there is some code between this. And uh, what is different with machine learning? The code will be automatically generated, and you don't have to, to wonder about this. So we will take the example of Homer. Here is the Homer of the Odyssey. And here is Homer Simpson. And we will try to train a model and to do some image recognition uh, about uh, which Homer uh, we want to find. So we have different images of Homer Simpson and different images of Homer uh, from the UDC. And we will see we have to put some labels. So the syntax of Homer is uh, the same in English. So I have add a E at the end for the French uh, syntax. And we will try to build the function, the algorithm, automatically. So we have the label data. And we want to train an algorithm and have an algorithm as result. And after this, we will send a query and have a prediction. So that's cool. 
we have this function, we put an images, and we will, we will have a probability to be Homer Simpson or Homer from the UDC. It's quite simple, and the function is built automatically from um, at the train uh, um, uh, task. So we will see some use case at OVH, and uh, you will s you will say, but it's not Homer and it's not image recognition, but it's the same. It's a function automatically built. So a first use case is the electricity consum consumption forecast in order to predict how we will consume and to better negotiate contract with our electricity provider. So you see uh, here is there is a prediction in detail for each data center and it allows us to scale generators and uh, the supply as well to better scale and to improve our pricing. And if you remember our values, uh, we want to have uh, low prices as well and the better prices. Another use case is the anomaly detection. In our data centers, servers are water cooled. So this is, this is pretty cool. But we have to uh, take care about the temperature. And so we have, de we have uh, developed an algorithm to detect anomalies uh, in each room and each rack of our DC, 30 DC all around the world. It's a lot of uh, time series as well. And we have to detect and uh, we can't use uh, some fixed values because it changes all over the time. Uh, it depends on the weather, it depends on the load on the server. So the, the best solution that we have developed is this solution. And it works pretty well. Another use case is uh, VOIP, lines monitoring and forecast. Uh, why? Because VOIP lines is a trade market. So you have to buy and after you sell. So if you know how much you will sell, you know how much you have to buy. And it's quite simple, it's forecast and a function and as an input, a time series, as an output, another time series. So there is another and there is many, many, many uh, different projects that we are working on. There is uh, two groups. There is uh, the predictive balance as well on our equipment in data center. And the other part is ar around the fraud, like spam, phishing, fraud detection, data leak. Uh, there is a full of project. Here is another example that we have uh, worked on is to predict the size of our safe cluster in order to better scale uh, our safe cluster. So now we will see the machine learning development process. There is different steps. As you may remember, there is the data collection, the data preparation, the model search, and the deployment of the model. And we will see each steps. The first steps is the data scientist job, is to understand the business problem and to uh, modelize the data and to do some feature extraction. It's very interes uh, interesting for the data scientist and they have to find a better way to, um, to develop the file or uh, the columns that uh, represent the problems of the business. So it's okay. And the next step is quite boring. It's the pre-processing. You have to scale, you have to encode data. Who knows uh, machine learning in this room? Do you like to pre-process your data, encode it? You can raise your hand if you like. No, nobody likes this. So we will see after how we manage it on the platform. The next step is the optimization part. We have to find the better algorithm and its associated parameters. So you have to try different configuration, do some grid search, it's very boring, it takes some time. And uh, we will try to find a better solution for this. 
And the last, but not the least, is to deploy the model. We, c we have different uh, language, different framework. You have to do some service monitoring on, our on your services. If you deploy your model, you have to keep it uh, updated. So it's quite complicated for the data scientist and DevOps are here to uh, manage this. So you will s we will see how we handle this problem as well. So globally, we are trying to industrialize machine learning in order to simplify the data scientist job and enable quick win fast fail. Why quick win fast fail? Because if we have a problem, if we have the business problem, we can test it and see if it's okay or not. Because sometimes it fails because the problem can be cannot be been solved by a machine learning algorithm. And you have a different uh, workflow, or it uh, it allows us to have a better uh, better life. So we'll see our solution, which is called OVH Cloud AutoML. And previously we called it Prescience. If you take a look at uh, the at the end of the presentation, I will give you some links to try the solution. And uh, it's called Prescience. Prescience. We are changing the name today. So, what is uh, OVH Cloud AutoML? It's a self-service platform in order to help data scientists to uh, deploy models easily at scale as well. And you have a UI and a, a Python a CLI to automate the task. So, um, we have chosen to do only these steps not the uh, data collection uh, because it's the data scientist job. He have to prepare the data to put in the platform and let him let uh, let it work. And it allows us to do some retrain or for fraud, for instance, you have to retrain every day. So it's fully automati automated on the platform. So we will see the architecture. It's the global architecture. We have decided our first decision was to use um, OpenStack and especially Nova. Nova for the compute. Why? Because you, we have GPUs, we have some flavors, we need uh, more RAM, we need more disk for uh, some task. It was quite complicated and Nova uh, helps us to do this. And on, on top of Nova, we used um, Kubernetes. And if you want to talk about Kubernetes and how it's deployed on uh, OpenStack, uh, Kevin will, will uh, do a talk uh, tomorrow to uh, in order to explain uh, uh, to explain you how it's built. So we deploy some pods upon a, a Kubernetes, and w for the storage, we have chosen Swift because it's scale here, it's scale and here it's scale. It's okay. We don't have problem. So, here is the result. You have the UI and you have the Python CLI. CLI. So here I'm uh, I'm trying to solve the problem of the passengers of an airport. I'm trying to predict, to create a model that that will forecast how many passengers there will be in the airport, and it's, it's exactly the same with the UI and the Python CLI. So, we will see in details each steps that we have seen previously. So, the first step is to do preprocessing. Before this, there is a parser. We need to parse the data. Uh, you know, for instance, if there is an a CSV, we have to know what are the columns. If there is an integer, a string, so the parser will detect the type and do some statistics about it. After this, there is a preprocessor will, uh, which will uh, replace missing values, which uh, will encode uh, categories, and uh, it will uh, use the statistics of the parser. For instance, if you have a um, uh, a low cardinality of a category, 
we can use a one hot encoder. And if the cardinality is high, we can use a level coding as well. And it's fully automati automated. So it's deployed, as we have seen, on Kubernetes and, uh, B, uh, and Nova. And we are using Spark as well. And the result, which is uh, serialized in PMML, is stored on Swift, as I've already explained. And there is some issues with Spark and Swift. The most issues that we had, Spark is using Swift like HDFS, but uh, Swift is, is eventually consistent. So this is a problem for us. And uh, we wanted to solve this problem. So we begin to use a better library than the Hadoop one. You have a, um, a Hadoop library to connect Spark and Swift, which is a mess. So we started to use Stockator, which is a library from IBM. And uh, it solved some problems, but not the async list, because when you store data with Swift, when you do some list, the list is asynchronous. So we have tried to solve these problems with a custom library, but it's still not OK, and we have to uh, work on it. But the best solution was to abstract the, s the storage. So we have, uh, we have used mine.io, and we can use now Ceph, S3 connector, Kubernetes to store data, we have the, the, the choice to do what we want and to configure it. So now we are at the algorithm uh, selection. We have decided to use a SMAC to configure uh, the, the algorithm selection. If you want to talk about this, it's a machine learning uh, algorithm and you can talk about it because it's not uh, the purpose of uh, today. So here, the here is the architecture. So you have some optimizer. And optimizer, we will send some query to a controller. The controller will, add, will ask some task to the worker, which are some learner, which with different algorithm, TensorFlow, scikit-learn. And it will try to find the better solution for our problem. And it will try what we call different configuration. A configuration is an algorithm, and it's associated um, hyperparameters. And the result is stored into Redis. The optimizer read the result and send another query to find the better uh, configuration for uh, the problem that he is trying to solve. And we are using SMAC, with which is um, uh, um, um, not a machine learning, but a configurator for algorithm, a automated configurator for algorithm, SMAC. So here in details, how we store it then to Swift as well, because we store everything on Swift. And we have serialized models stored on Swift uh, at the end of the optimization. So it's OK. Now we just have to deploy the model. So here are the serialized model and on Swift. And we have to load it on a serving API uh, using our cluster, uh, Kubernetes cluster. And we are deploying our uh, model. And we are able to scale with uh, Kubernetes and add uh, some uh, worker if we want to handle uh, some load. And we if we have some, uh, uh, some big batch uh, that is uh, currently on the platform. And all the metrics are stored into uh, our metrics data platform, which currently uh, is about uh, 500 million uh, time series, and, uh, not only for us. So this platform allows us to uh, focus on high-value tasks. 
on the da data collection. The, the data scientist is focused on this problem. And we use the cloud to solve our problem of optimization, of preprocessing, and we have a feedback loop in order to have a better, uh, uh, better algorithm and better solution. So there is another platform, just a few words about it. We are working on it, especially for uh, the deployment of models. Uh, this platform is a uh, serving engine in order to deploy models, but not only on the full machine learning platform, because sometimes we have to develop specific models that can't be in the OVH AutoML. So we have to uh, have another platform to deploy model. That's why we have built this one. And this is very important because we are thinking about open sourcing and we are open sourcing this platform. And the goal, the final goal of this, uh, uh, of this open sourcing is to open source first the serving engine and then all the platform. And we have started with the end of uh, the serving because it's quite simpler for us to begin with this. If you want to use uh, our platform, there is some link, some QR code. It is free, it's our lab, and we are using feedback to uh, this to collect the feedback of our customer. So the machine learning platform is the first, and the serving engine is here. And uh, we will open source in about one month this platform, and I don't know for the, for the, it's, uh <laughs> I don't know right now, but uh, about in six months we, we are working on it. And uh, a few words we are hiring. So if you're interested in uh, OpenStack and you want to, uh, to work with cool people and all around the world, uh, here is a link also. You can apply, and you have a job description uh, about uh, which is uh, avail available. So thank you. <laughs> oh, sorry, I uh, I forgot. If you have questions, don't hesitate. Uh, perhaps I missed it, but um, you never talk about uh, that you have hardware capabilities down there supporting your machine learning things like using of virtual GPUs and things like that. You don't do this simply or you have it and you just men didn't mention it or I was falling asleep. No, sorry, I didn't. It was very interesting actually. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't mention because we are focused. Uh, there is some teams at OVH Cloud. Some guys are working on OpenStack. Some guys like Kevin are working on Kubernetes, and we are only focused on our stack. So the technical problems of our GPUs, shared GPUs, uh, V100, and uh, there is uh, some guys to solve these problems and to uh, allow us to use simply. We just have to deploy a configuration on Kubernetes and to use uh, the GPUs. And if there is a, a problem, right now we are working on shared GPUs because we are uh, trying to solve problems about uh, inference, serving engine, and uh, we have to use shared GPUs. So I on I've only asked uh, Kevin to uh, give me this and it's a feature on its platform. Any question?
Okay, I have a question. So, what are the KPIs you're using for anomaly detection for different kinds of servers like logs, metrics? For anomaly detection, uh, temperature? Uh, you're just doing anomaly detection for temperature, but how yep. did you choose uh, temperature as the KPI for anomaly detection? We have choose uh, because we are using water cooling. And we have to think uh, about the load uh, or the, the temperature of the cooling system, and uh, um, we have to be sure the every everything is okay. But in the future, we will work on uh, predictive maintenance. And right now, I I think we will work on the disk, but it's not sure right now. We have to uh, do some KPIs to measure if the project is uh, more important uh, than another and to start this project if it's uh, the case. Is it okay? Yeah, thank you. Hi. So I know that you uh, said that you store the results in Swift. Where do you keep the uh, training data? The? Uh, the training data. The, uh, the training data yeah. or everything is stored on Swift. I love it. Everything. Yes, everything in Swift. <laughs> More stuff in Swift. Yeah. We s Swift scales. It's not a problem for us. And we have teams that works on Swift. That's why we have chosen Swift. We don't have to worry about this. It's okay. Only with Spark. And we are trying to solve this. Cool. Thank you. Is it okay? No question? Thank you. <laughs>